our opening keynote for today is brought by Gary Hawking. Uh, Gary is a developer evangelist at Twilio, but he's more well known for being argumentative on the internet. Uh, he loves to contribute to open source, but mainly he can be found getting other people to call for him by streaming on Twitch. Uh, these are the things I wish I knew when I started playing developer by Gary Hawking. Gary, the stage is yours. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me. Like I have this terrible thing from streaming on Twitch that I can't see any needles moving in this environment. So let's hope that everyone can hear me. It's all good. Um, how are you doing, Stefano? It's good to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. Um, yeah. These I'm are angry. interesting I'm times. Good. Indeed. Exactly. So this is things I'd wished I'd known, apparently not earlier because I got the title wrong. And then I realized that my slides are all in images somehow when I changed Mac. Like so I couldn't edit them. So I was like, okay, I'll just cross it out. It's all good. So this is things I wish I knew known when I started playing developer rather than things I wish I'd known earlier. Um, but it's all good. So let's get started. This is a really weird thing. Um, yeah, alternative alternative, I should say, titles for this talk include casinos will hurt hate you when you learn these simple hacks to improve your developer life. Or um, I followed these simple developer rules and you won't believe what happened next. Hello. Um, yes, this is where things get weird because, um, yeah, uh, I'm not very used to giving these kind of talks remotely, even though, as I say, I do a lot of live video streaming. I am normally used to being able to see people's faces and to get people to shout stuff out to me. Um, and... So I thought, how can I try and make this experience a little bit more like a traditional conference? And the first thing I thought was, well, I can use my amazing Twitch overlays, right? So that I can do cool things with the video. That's something I wouldn't have been able to do on stage. So that's awesome. Um, but the second thing I thought was that I could try and give people a chance to, to answer some of the um, little quizzy things that I've got. So you'll see screenshots of games, because I'm a gamer and we'll come to that. Um, and you can, in chat, I can see chat right here as one of my cornucopia of screens I have in front of me. I can see the stage and the event chat. So if you want to guess on a game, um, because the, the chat is a little bit behind, I'll put these slides up and then in a few seconds later, where you see the little question marks down in the corner, um, a few slides later, I'll, I'll look at chat to give you all a chance to catch up to where I am and we'll see if anyone can get the games. So now's the time you should all be typing in chat what this game is. Um, I don't have another slide later, but I do see some answers in chat. So my interaction is working. So we're all good. So we can move on. And I can once again say, hello, um, I'm Gary. Um, you may or may not recognize the conference that I'm selfie in right here. Um, this was where I gave a talk at PHP Day in Verona a few years ago. Uh, this was a great fun. I loved this talk. This was uh, another keynote I did closing the conference, and I had tons of fun. I loved that event. It's kind of sad that we're not all um, we're not all in the room. I'm not able to sit in the sun in May drinking spritz and seeing everybody. But you know, it's fine. Life goes on. And we're having fun. So I'm Gary and I love computer games. But unfortunately for me and those of you who've seen me play will know that this is not a lie. I'm terrible at computer games. And so um, I find myself playing a ton of computer games and typing things in into Google like this. Like things I wish I knew earlier when I'm playing Pac-Man or when I'm playing Fallout or when I'm playing World of Warcraft. Like I, the obvious things are not obvious to me. And I think that's a really important thing to think about is that what's obvious to you is not necessarily obvious to me. Things are only obvious when you know them, right? So we're looking here at Pac-Man, and it's kind of obvious that you're supposed to eat the dots and avoid the ghosts when you know it. But like when my little kid was playing Pac-Man for the first time, they thought that they could make friends with the ghosts and hug them, and that was the aim of the game. So it's really difficult to to know what things are obvious until you know them. And I think that's if there's one thing that we take away from this is that what is obvious to me is not necessarily obvious to you. And that's why I find myself Googling these phrases, things I wished I knew earlier when I started playing X. And I think that's what this talk is for me. It's some things are 
obvious until they're not. And some things were not obvious to me until very late on in my career, embarrassingly so in some cases. So let's take a look at a few of those. Um, I've got some tips. They're in no particular order, and I've tried to shoehorn them into game references just because that's kind of the point of the talk. And some sometimes the shoehorning is less than others, and sometimes the shoehorning is, is pretty good. So, yeah, my first tip is to put some points into charisma. So here's your first question, Mark. You can, you can whack into chat. I can see both event chat and stage chat, but stage chat is best for me um, if you wouldn't mind using the stage chat so I don't have to click around tabs. So, yeah, put some points into charisma. What does that mean? Well, you can see here in this game I put eight points into charisma. But typically, particularly in games, some games, I'll just go, oh, I don't want to put any points into charisma. That's a boring stat. And what we're talking about here is interacting with your, your colleagues, your friends, your, um, your, uh, your leaders where you work, your bosses, the people you interact with. And I think for me, the, the thing that I've done that's really kind of helped me to get on in my career is to think before I speak more. So consider what I say, particularly when I'm with people who I haven't worked with a lot before, or when I'm around people who don't know me or don't know my personality. Um, so no, it's not Trello I see in chat, by the way. I mean, it's a good guess, but it's not Trello. Um, so yeah, instead, I, this was definitely me. And those of you in chat who I see who've known me for a, for a while will will know that, yeah, I would have said that, definitely. This is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And what I've changed from saying that is to saying something more like, I'm not sure about that idea. Have you considered this idea? And I think just considering what, you, what, you, what you're going to say and how you're going to say it, and that comes into a point that we have later, is definitely something that has really helped me to get on better with my colleagues and also to make my counter ideas more... Um, more approachable and more useful because if you just go back and say this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard we should do it this way you're not opening people up to be receptive to your ideas right whereas if you say oh I'm not sure about that have you thought about doing it this way you're definitely opening people up to consider your opinions and your views that maybe after me or maybe you're more experienced than the person and you have better ideas or you're less experienced you just think about things that they haven't so it's really Considering what I say, particularly in these times of remote working, particularly in these times of chat, where interpreting how, what someone's saying via the power of chat can be very difficult. Um, I suffer with anxiety disorder, so I'm constantly reading between the lines of what people say to me in chat. Um, that's a real big deal for me, is when someone types in this time of remote working, I mean, what am I saying? I've been remote working for a decade, but yeah, when someone types in these times of remote working, it can be so easy to misconstrue what, what's being said. And I think that what we do um, a lot is to take that directly to, to voice as soon as possible so that there's no misconceptions. But yeah, it's it's difficult. This is not an easy sub, uh, an easy subject. I don't think that's a good idea. Sorry, no. Saying no is something that I've never had a problem with, but I know other people do. Um, I'm very fortunate that I don't I don't feel like saying no is a big problem, but learning to say no is a really, really, really important skill when you want to work with other people and get on with, with a team. Um, learning how to say no and who's receptive to it, and it's not easy, but you definitely do need to say no. Are you sure you 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 don't think that's a good idea? No, I don't think that's a good idea. Sorry, you know I have to say sorry at the end. I'm British. It's what we do. Um, sorry is optional, but being able to say no is really important. I think, and and that's you know putting some points into charisma is more about how what you say and how you say it. Um, and I think that's really important. What is not about this tip is becoming an extrovert and, you know, being, oh, loud like I am right now and excitable about everything. No, you do you and you be you. It's definitely not about changing your personality. I think it's just about being more considered in what we say. And that's kind of been something I really wish I'd picked up on that earlier in my career. I really do. Um, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is be nice, as uh, Julia said earlier. Like, be really, you know, always be nice. But I don't think you want to be too nice, particularly in work. You know, nobody's saying you should be trampled all over because you're nice. Um, I think the key thing is like, I, this was doing the rounds on Twitter a few years ago. Listening is not waiting for the other person to finish talking. And that's something I've suffered with massively in my life where I'm like, 
I know how this person is going to finish their sentence. Therefore, I'll interrupt. And it's not necessarily rudeness. It's just excitement. You're like, oh, I can't wait to make my counterpoint here. But as soon as you assume you know what the person is going to say in the end of their sentence, you're not listening anymore. And you're just assuming you know what people are going to finish. And they could be trying to make a completely different point. So, yeah, listening is not waiting for the other person to finish talking, apparently. Um, yeah, we're back to this. The one thing I'd like to say while I quickly check chat is um, being a straight talker and, and not mincing your words is a brilliant um brilliant skill to have in work because i feel like it doesn't waste anyone's time but being a straight talker is no excuse for being a dick right you can't just um get away with saying oh yeah i'm, I'm just going to be horrible because i tell it like it is like that is not an excuse so let's take a look we did see trello in chat it wasn't trello we did have fallout nobody seems to know only only one guess of fallout this is the incredibly underrated fallout 76 or trello <laughs> fallout trello i think is a better name that's like that was a clever clever message good job good job chat so yeah the next tip is quick save regularly um yeah there's something there's something weird with these slides oh yeah i put tip two in and then i didn't put tip two in in the net in the look at that I, I i messed up so i'm old enough to remember floppy disks where quick saving was a not quick in fact i'm old enough to remember cassette tips to to save like i don't know if anyone's from the cassette tape era but saving the game used to be a living hell you'd literally have to take a cassette tape out put a new cassette in save the game Oh my God, it was a nightmare. And I mean, these floppy disks were not much better, right? They were an absolute pain. Nowadays, it's just a case of mashing F5. So quick saving regularly is, is always a good tip. Um, I think that the really important thing here is that I guess people would expect me to say quick saving regularly is like use version control and push regularly. Here's a game, by the way. Spam that chat with what you think this game is. Um, yeah, I guess people would expect me to say, oh, Git is like a quick save because if you push, you can always go back to where you were, blah, blah, blah. Nah, that's not me. I'm not going to go for the obvious. I'm going to go for the... Um, I'm going to go for the the less obvious analogy where I feel like unit tests or automated testing um, is, the, is the quick save regularly, is the quick save feature here, personally. Um, I think that... Automated tests give you the security that quick saves give you. Like when I've just quick saved, I can try and do something bonkers. I can go, I wonder if I can make that jump over there. Like, I wonder, is that jump even possible? I'll quick save and I'll try the jump. And then if I die, I'm like, oh, I'm back to where I was before. And I think that that's what the feeling that unit testing gives for me, particularly unit testing, any automated testing, but I feel like unit tests really give that to me. And look, Every single conference we all go to, there's always someone banging the drum for unit testing and saying, oh, you should be unit testing. And there's always this kind of, what I'm really not enjoying about our community at the moment is there's always this like judgment of people who aren't doing unit testing, who aren't using my ID, who aren't like using these tools or those tools. They aren't doing continuous integration. They haven't got build servers. They don't deploy automatically. Like no judgment. I just really feel like unit tests give me this security. We've been coding on stream, and I see a few people in chat um, who, who hang out on the stream now and again. And we don't have unit tests in the project I'm working on at the moment. We'll come to that later. And that gives that makes me feel nervous constantly. I constantly feel nervous, like when you're playing a game where you can't quick save, and you've you know you're. You're a good 40 minutes in from the last checkpoint. All of a sudden, every every single fight becomes more nerve-wracking and every sort of parkour you need to do becomes more nerve-wracking. So, yeah, I think that's the way I feel like unit testing is your quick save feature. It just gives you the security that you feel like you need. Um, the book I recommend is The Grumpy Programmer's Guide to uh, Testing PHP Applications. I'm not on commission from Chris. Um, people think I am because I always recommend his books. But in all honesty, this is the book that um, this is the book that got me over the, the the hump of learning of understanding what unit testing is. Actually, it's not this book. It was um, the Grumpy Programmer's Guide to PHP Unit. But all the content from there is in this book. This is like um, an amalgamation of all of Chris's book. I highly recommend it. If if you wanna, if you're not unit testing and you deploy, and every time you deploy, you get that feeling in the pit of your stomach. Like I really hope I haven't broken anything. This is the book for you, and that's all I will say about that. So let's go back. I saw tons of half lives in the um, 
in the chat. So yeah, Half Life. This this is one of my favorite games. They're waiting for you, Gordon, down in the test chamber. I love this game. This game holds fond fond memories for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to play Half Life now. This is not a great choice of slides. Like when I'm standing on a stage when we're all available to hang out in person, then um, yeah. I don't get that feeling because I'm sat down at my desk. It's like, mm, I really just want to play a game right now. So, yeah, we've got another tip going, which is play with friends. And, you know, you're all hanging out in this virtual conference. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who've been to PHP Day or other conferences. Um, so, yeah, this is this is uh, one of my favorite games to play with friends. Here you can see myself and uh, Matt Brunt from Brunty from the community playing. Um yeah, any guesses what this game is? This is a game that I'm really bad at, but I love. I play with Marco Pavetta, um, who we all know and love from the... I think, Marco Italian? Austrian, Italian, right? So I play with Marco and with Brenty, and if you want to hang out and play with us, um, you can do so on uh, jerkstalkgames.com. There's a Discord server. Come and play. We, I love it. I love playing games with the community. This is, this is awesome. Um, but yeah, play with friends is like a really, really, really sound piece of advice for me personally and now i'm distracted watching this game so let's move on um and i think one of the things that is been a massive um it's been a huge deal in my own career and if anyone was at the um if anyone was at the last uh the last keynote I did where I talked about the power of open source in my career, you'll know there's this concept of twink, which apparently is a whole different thing outside of gaming, um, which I found out when I gave this talk in the US, because this does not have the connotations that I thought it did in the US. And um, I wouldn't recommend Googling that right now um, if you're on a works computer. But yeah, um, a low level character made more powerful by high level characters, usually through gifts of armor and weapons. So this is talking about power leveling people in think games like World of Warcraft or other MMORPGs by pulling them up to your level. And I think that that's something that's always been a massive, massive boon in my career. Like, I can't tell you how much people have reached down. People like Matthew Weirafini, um, Marco Pavetta, Rob Allen, you know, pe these people have just really, really, really helped me. And I didn't start chatting to these people because I wanted to, like, leverage their... Uh, their high level and power level me up to them. That's not how it worked. But what happened was I made friends with them and then they just were happy to help me out. So yeah, I think like what we're really talking about loosely here is a mentoring relationship. Um, PHP Mentoring.org used to be a great resource. I have no idea, like your mileage may vary. I have no clue if this is any good anymore, um, to be honest with you, but you know, it is what it is. I don't think it necessarily needs to be this huge, formal mentor what's the opposite of mentor mentee no apprentice i don't know whatever padawan um i don't think it needs to be that kind of formal relationship or certainly that that wasn't what i needed anyway maybe those you know that'll be a better relationship for you um one of the big problems about playing with friends is learning to ask questions and we kind of um covered this in the put some points into charisma is learning learning to ask questions is really difficult excuse me i've got a nice hot fresh cup of tea um in my um special sister mug um oh my green screen's gone all funny as well there we go oh it's because i've changed the focus on the camera on my special sister mug um, i'm not a special sister but you know it's fine so i'm gonna take a sip mm. beautiful Beautiful. So yeah, asking questions can be difficult because just saying, I don't know how to do that. Could you help please? Is what you say, but what you're thinking is if I ask, everyone will know I'm fake and everything. It's like asking questions is revealing ignorance in some people's mind. Um, and I think that's, that's a tricky thing to get over. I know that people who know me now will find it incredibly um, difficult to to actually believe that I found it difficult to ask questions because now I'm the opposite. Like now I just ask questions for everything. Like the people who are my, my closest friends in, in tech. Um, and I see Derek in chat. He'll know that there was a time where I was really working with XD bug a lot. And I just like pestered him mercilessly. Um, and that was mainly laziness. So don't be Gary, but be somewhere in between. Uh, try not to worry too much. Like about if I ask everyone, now I'm faking everything. I know that's easy to say. 
Uh, try not to worry about imposter syndrome, which is a known thing that probably more people in the in the audience will suffer with that don't than not suffer with. So I don't know what the answer is here. I'm available. Um, you can see my Twitter handle in the bottom there, at GWH. Hit me up, um, ghawk in at twilio.com. If you if you just want to ask some questions or want me to put you in touch with somebody you can ask questions with, with no judgment, no worry, no panic, um, yeah, hit me up. I can definitely connect you with people who are happy to, to help. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. I mean, you're already at, the, at an event, right? So you're kind of doing well in this regard because there's – breakout rooms here there's the hallway track um it's much easier in person but i have to say that crisp have done an amazing job in making this feel like a, a real a real event <laughs> sorry crisp this is definitely a real event i meant an in-person event words can be hard um so yeah hang out um i'll be hanging out in the hallway track all day so hit me up if you just want to chat about things like please do i love it i love it you know it's it's what i go to conferences for um, is the knowledge and the conversations, and I love it. So yeah, I'll be around all day. I, I, I so I haven't used this slide deck for a while. I have no idea why this slide was in here. Like I've checked my notes and everything, but I just thought, you know, let's just keep that slide in here because why not? Um, I really didn't like that beer. I remember it. I was with, I was in Amsterdam. Oh, that wasn't a good beer. Jordy caught me looking a fool. So let's leave it in there. Why not? So what was this game? I did see a few answers in chat. Apex Legends. I love this game, but I'm absolutely terrible at it. So, yeah, there's that. There's that. It's okay. So, yeah, quick advert break. We've talked about my uh, we talked about my, my Slack channel. So let's talk a little bit about my Slack. I love this. This is where you can come and hang out and have a chat with me at any time you want. Um, Twitch.tv slash Babby. This is what we've been working on recently. So the Twitch chat can modify the code in my IntelliJ ID, uh, PHP Storm, essentially, by using commands in chat. And we're having tons of fun. So yeah, come and hang out. If you, even if you're not interested in what I'm talking about, if you just want to have a chat or ask opinions of chat, um, Twitch, did I say Slack? Oh, sorry. Twitch.tv slash Babby. Luckily it's on the screen. I got more sense. So yeah, come hang out. I loved, I'd love to see you there. Uh, blatant advert because why wouldn't I use someone else's platform to promote my Twitch? So here we go. Here's another tip. We're doing okay for time. Learn the mechanics. So this is another time to spam the chat with your answers to what game this is. So when I talk about learning the mechanics in a gaming concept, this can go too far. So anyone who's played a game like World of Warcraft will know that people will do raids and they'll figure out exactly how many attacks the boss does before they go into um, go into rage mode. And so you have to kill it in under three minutes or back off and then go again. And it's like learning, understanding the mechanics of the game makes the game totally totally easier to play um this game here is like taking it to the extreme while learning the mechanics pretty much is the game um but yeah we can move on so what how do we learn the mechanics in terms of um you know our development careers i think like design patterns are the thing that i wish that i'd learned earlier and i'm sure there's loads of other formal things i didn't do a formal computer science degree um and I think I, I, I don't have any regrets. I do not believe that anybody needs a computer science degree to do this job. Let me make that 100% clear. But I have some regrets. And those regrets are largely around the fact that it took me a long time to learn some of the formal mechanics, for want of a better word, of development. And design patterns were one of those things. Um, I now love design patterns and will use... Um, use them wherever I see them. And that's a different argument for another day. This Gang of Four book is the de facto book that I would love to say, yes, I learned my design patterns from elements of reusable object oriented software by the Gang of Four. Like I totally didn't, of course I didn't. I couldn't read past the first like four pages of this. It's so dry, too dry for me. And some people will love that. I'm not academically minded in any shape or form. So yeah, I learned my design patterns on YouTube. Um, <laughs> Which, because of course I did, right? Even though I'm in my 40s, that doesn't stop me being like, you know, in my 20s in my own head. So I learned um, via programming with Anthony, Anthony Ferreira. They're eight years old now, these videos, but the design patterns haven't changed. So don't let Anthony's um, chubby a look and, uh, and ponytail, uh, you know, 
swear you and um, please don't tweet anthony and tell him i just said that he looks chubby and has a ponytail in his videos um but yeah programming with anthony's great lara casts design patterns is great um word of warning the the describe the design patterns perfectly but call them slightly different things it doesn't really matter what you call them um design patterns are incredibly um simple concepts packaged up with incredibly pretentious names in my opinion um yeah, you, you can think that or not. It's up to you. Uh, but for me, like dependency injection is much more complicated than calling it pass, pass your dependencies in the constructor. Like it took me forever to not be scared of the term dependency injection. I think I went to a talk at PHP Northwest about dependency injection. I was like, I've been doing this forever. I just didn't know it was called dependency injection. And I feel like there's a lot of that in design patterns. So yeah, Laracast has got a really good design pattern series. And we also need to talk about best practices. Um, best practices, look, our community is kind of fragment, fragmented a bit at the moment with people who do it one way and people want to do it the other way. Some people want to be highly pragmatic. Other people want to be highly... Um, security conscious and and maintenance conscious and never the two may meet and i've got a foot in both camps which i'm grateful for best practices are best practices for a reason i don't believe that they've been made best practices by anyone with bad intentions i think the best practices can help us and by that i'm looking at things like using um, a standard code style whether that's a psr one or not will it just makes it just makes life so much easier if all of our code looks the same. Because when I want to look at some code in your project, I don't spend the first three minutes trying to get past the fact that I put my squiggly braces on different lines than you do. And that's all I'll say about best practices. So I would encourage anyone to use standards and use best practices. Or don't, like, this is no instruction. It's your career. It's your life. Do You know, you do what uh, you do you. But... I just feel like I spent so many hours arguing with people on the internet because that's what I do about best practices. And I'm like, look, just use them if you want to. I feel like if we all agree on things and use them, life is easier for all of us. But if you don't want to use them, that's fine. You know, I won't judge you much. I think one of the problems with design patterns is that I see, I try and use them everywhere now. Like I see a, a use for a proxy everywhere. Like I, I see use for, let's see one names. I don't see uses. I see use for single tons a lot. I see use, I don't see use for active record a lot, but yeah. I, I, so the, I think the trick with these things is to know what they are so that if you see them in the wild, you can understand them. And if you see a problem where they fit perfectly, you have the solution in your locker already. I think that's the, the trick. Um, oh, I didn't actually put the slide. So now we have to go all the way back to this. And I think I did see Eve online somewhere in chat. Oh my God, Eve, I lost so many ships. Yep, Eve online for those wondering. Yeah, the most meta brutal MMO ever. Yep, I agree. Eve online. I played for a while, but not to that degree. So my other tip is to play online early. Now this is going to be, um. oh, hang on. Oh, I put the slide in the wrong place. I did put it, but I put it on in the wrong place. So yeah, this... This is um, the question marks are there. I just moved them like behind my head because they, you couldn't see them in the bottom right hand corner. So most people should know this, right? Now, this is very interesting because when I was looking for um, for a, a screenshot for this game to, to shove in my, uh, in my slides, um, I came across this one and I thought, oh, look, here's a screenshot on the internet of me playing this game. And it's not me. So that was kind of freaky. Uh, but yeah. This this is kind of play online early is like the mantra is like drop hot learn fast so it's tempting um, playing online is always more brutal than playing against bots right and it's always tempting to um, to just like skirt around the edges and like play play the easy mode first but you learn so much faster when you drop hot in these games like when you get battles combat early you learn much faster and i think that's the point i think the point is for me and the way i learn and the way that i wished i'd learned when i was early in my career was pick something and do it we're learning java on stream at the moment and i 
started to learn Java by writing an IntelliJ plugin, which is probably not the best way to learn Java, but I've learned pretty damn fast because I decided to drop hot and just try. I've got something I want to achieve. I'm going to try and learn um, quickly. And so I'm going to set myself a task that I want to do. And of course, this is Fortnite. Um, I hate this game. <laughs> I know we're running out of low on time, but I'm not going to take many questions for this talk anyway. Um, Grusp, so sorry. I'm not. I'm not far off though. We're okay. My other tip is play other games. I've just talked about how I've uh, been trying to learn some Java. Um, this game is one of the most infuriating as well, and we've had a few infuriating games here. Um, but yeah, playing other games, i.e., working in other programming languages, is so cool. Like I loved it. I I worked in PHP. I've worked in PHP for twenty years. That's a long time, and I've also done commercial work in JavaScript, which I hated, stroke loved, and now I'm doing a little bit of. I've done Python that's been in in production, and now I'm doing a bit of Java. And I just feel like working in other languages and understanding what problems those languages solve better than PHP, because even though PHP is the global um, hammer that can solve every problem. It, it's not elegant at solving all the problems. You know, that's the truth of it. And so understanding what other languages do better than PHP and what other languages do worse than PHP gives you a new and renewed love and appreciation for PHP and what it is when you come back. Um, or it gives you a hatred. Mm. No, it gives you a new renewed appreciation. It definitely does. Um, and I, I really feel like that's kind of a massive deal for me, understanding which particular problems to, does Python solve well, um, or Java, or, or JavaScript, or whatever, is so, so valuable. I love it, and I think that that's, uh, that's a really, really sound piece of advice. Cuphead, indeed, the hardest game in the world now, officially, in the Guinness Book of Records. I don't know. Anyway, my last tip um, is cheat. Like, if all else fails, just cheat. You know, why not? Why not cheat? Does anyone know this game? And 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 does anyone understand why cheating, 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 cheating is a good reference for this game? Um. So if all else fails, yeah, cheat. I mean, there's a wall hacker that allows people to see through the wall, and I don't really mean cheat in that respect, do I? Maybe. Um. I think empathy is like cheats for developers. I really do. Like I learned, I've been, I work on empathy every day. Every day I ask myself, I try and put myself into the shoes of the person who I'm speaking to if there's a disagreement or for any reason at all. I think like empathy is just, it's a superpower. It's, 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 it's wall hack for developers. Like it is so good. This is a book I love, uh, Empathy, Why It Matters and How to Get It. This is not anything to do with tech. This just talks about empathy in general. But empathy is, in tech is just an unbelievable skill. So you're arguing with a boss or a colleague on the best way to do things, being able to empathize with them. And empathy is just being able to think or put yourself in the shoes of somebody else and understanding they, uh, why they may have their, um, their opinions. Because people have different experiences than you and therefore they have different opinions from you. And being able to appreciate that and think about it helps you to understand why somebody comes to you from a different perspective than you do. And it's so amazing. Also in our jobs, like empathy for your users is, is definite wall hack. Like trying to figure out why something isn't happening. Like, oh, only 60% of these people um, click this button and then trying to figure out why and thinking from the perspective of your users and who they may be and why they wouldn't click on that button is just definitely a superpower. That is a definite wall hack. Like empathy is, I just feel like as a developer, I const, I work on empathy every day. Um, that's the truth. I think about empathy every day and I love it. I just quickly will mention, as we talked about users, uh, as a developer evangelist, my job is to make users awesome. And if you're interested in evangelism or if you're interested in how you can take products, if you're doing product-based work, how you can take products and make your users um, advocates for your products, this is the book for you, Badass, Making Users Awesome. I love this book, Kathy Sierra. Huge recommendation for this book. Nothing to do with empathy or wall hack or cheating, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, code reviews, definitely cheating in my regard. People will totally disagree with this. 
Um, so yeah, code reviews also known as Marco is watching. If you were in my last keynote uh, here in uh, in Verona last time out, Marco is always watching. So code reviews are superpowers, um, and the reason that they're superpowers is that you just get they're cheating because you get opinions of people who may be smarter or more experienced than you. They aren't smarter than you. They could be more uh, experienced than you, but you get opinions of other people on your code. Um, what I'm not saying is cheat by making the lowest possible attempt at the problem in the ticket and then putting it up for code review and getting someone else to do your work for you. Like, I'm not I'm not saying to do that, but that's pretty much what I do on stream every day. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but that's fine. I'm not saying do that. Don't do that. Like, make a good attempt at it. But it is like cheating in my mind. Um, code reviews are amazing, amazing tool. Uh, and I, I just feel like... Being able to, to to learn from peers, whether they're 20 years more experienced than you or 20 years less experienced than you, is just an amazing, amazing cheat. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, this game. Does anyone know what this game is? I forgot what the game was at the beginning. Now we'll come back to it. Um, everyone must know this game, surely. Everybody. Rubber Deckins are awesome. We've talked about... Um, we've talked about... Um, how asking questions is great. And half the time when I go to ask a question of someone, I come up with the answer. So rubber ducking, if you don't know, is ask a question of a rubber duck, or if you don't have a rubber duck, ask it of a um, a fluffy elephant. Um, and the in the way where you need to reframe the question in your mind so you can explain the problem to someone else, you'll find that you come up with the answer yourself. And that's the way it is, you know. And I think rubber ducking, if you don't use it already, like it feels weird to speak to an inanimate object, but just being able to to rephrase a question in a way that somebody else can understand it can often give you the answer. So that's definitely like a little cheat. And um, this was Counter Strike, and I saw a few of them in the chat. So good job to the Counter Strike crew, CS, who may. I used to play in 1.6. I've told you I'm old. It's fine. You only get asked to do these things if you're old. Sorry, Samantha, who's doing the closing. Um, it's, it's a fact of life. So that's me done. Yay! Um, yeah, that's me. Uh, I've really, really enjoyed uh, speaking here. I find these incredibly difficult to do. So thanks to everybody in the chat. Um, oh, yeah, it was Minecraft. Sorry. Thanks to everyone in the chat who's engaged with me because I'm terrible. Like, If you've seen me speak before, you know... I need to get people to shout out and, and interact with me. So the fact that you've done it virtually for me is a huge thank you from me. Um, so I guess I need to like, I need to like, you know, fire with something snappy, right? Always be branding. So I guess I'm going to say, be nice. We talked about being nice, make friends, be nice, make friends and have fun. Yeah, I always have fun. So thank you very much. Um, you can find me on Twitter at GWHGH, um, and I'll be hanging out all day if you want to chat. I have a few meetings, so I may not be the most responsive. But thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Gary. This was a brilliant, brilliant keynote. Thank you. I, as a gamer, I, I enjoyed it a lot. So I hope our fellow developer slash gamers friends are going to appreciate it too. Uh, so we do have a few minutes left for just, I guess, one question. Um, let's see if we have something coming from the chat. Good game, obviously. <laughs> the greeting for the end of this talk should be good game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I guess I can fire a question uh, myself to you. Um, so uh, among all the, the these things that you wish you, you knew earlier, uh, which one was the one that helped you most in your career? You have, you, you, you've had a pretty long career. You changed a role quite a few times. So what was the one thing that made, made your career just turn the page? Um, technically, it was definitely when I learned unit testing, when I understood that your testing Unit tests, the, the the word unit in unit tests refers to the smallest unit that you can test. And I think that when I actually figured that out, um, then, um, yeah, that was the difficult thing. And I'd like to say that Joe in chat makes an amazing point here. The privilege plays a big role in some of the things I said, of course. Of course it does, right? I'm a white man. 
Um, so doors will always have been opened for me easier and asking questions will have not been taken um, in quite such a, a, uh, a way as it would have been if I was a non-white man. Like, let's be honest here. This is the, the nature of the beast. So, yes, I appreciate that, uh, Joe. And I think that this is why I feel like empathy is the superpower that it is. I think for me, technically, unit testing, non-technically, empathy, 100%. Like, I try and I try and pay it back and pay it forward as much as I can um, for the doors that were open to me. And yeah, appreciating the fact that I've had it easy and other people don't simply because of their gender or their skin color or their background or something is is what empathy gives to me, I believe.